the way people lived before was different. A medieval blacksmith was the best at making horseshoes, while a renowned weaver made clothes for the entire town. The job was often meant to be done by the most skilled and noted, but with the industrial, and especially the information revolution, the paradigm has changed. Now, for many people, success has nothing to do with their mastery, but rather expertise. Nowadays, we have to work in a system in which there is always a daunting person above you, both literally, in a corporate letter, and figuratively, because we live alongside each other and are always ready to criticize. And this is no joke to our physical and mental states. There is even some research in favor of the idea that the modern lifestyle is responsible for men's testosterone level dropping, let alone lower self-esteem and worse psyche. Every single day, we find ourselves wrestling with tasks that fail to ignite even a flicker of positive emotion. Sometimes the job demands us to plunge into something that's light years away from interesting. And yet, these seemingly uninspiring tasks are integral to every occupation. Soccer players, for instance, must tirelessly train their physique, a far cry from actual kicks on the field. Even mobile app developers are often confronted with mundane chores instead of showcasing their boundless creativity. You have to understand that whatever your occupation is, you sometimes have to deal with stuff that you don't find pleasant. But fear not, you're not alone. Let's look at four techniques to coerce yourself into thinking that this kind of stuff ain't that bad. With the reward-based approach, I started setting up little incentives for myself. After finishing one of those lackbuster tasks, I treat myself to something or take a short break. It could be something as simple as savoring a piece of chocolate. Ooh, I love the 55% dark chocolate. Maybe taking a quick walk outside or watching a short video online could help. Needless to say, it's been a game changer. By attaching positive rewards to completing less exciting tasks, I've tricked my mind into finding some satisfaction in them. It's like turning a burden of work into an opportunity for personal growth and accomplishment. The more I see the benefits of this approach, the more I've come to embrace those tasks and even challenge myself to tackle them more efficiently. This approach, however, is not without drawbacks, because you kind of foster short-term focus over long-term motivation. Critics argue that relying too much on rewards may undermine inborn motivation. It's almost like in school, when your parents promised you a dollar or two for every A or B you got during the classes. In spite of its negative points, this method has added a whole new dimension to my work life. It's made the daily grind more bearable and has helped me find joy in even the most tedious activities. Don't get me wrong, I still do face challenges, but now I've found a way to motivate myself and encourage a more positive outlook. It's amazing how such simple shift in perspective can make such a huge difference on how you approach your work. This second one is quite fun, especially if you enjoy habit trackers, physical ones or in the form of mobile apps. It's what people usually refer to as gamification. Gamification involves incorporating elements of games, such as competition, badges, points, challenges, etc. into non-game contexts, like daily chores. The idea is to make these activities more engaging and enjoyable by tapping into our natural inclination towards play. By the way, here's a fun book you could read to better understand the mechanics connecting games and people. This is no paid promotion, just my personal recommendation. Have a nice read. Here's how gamification could work. You assign points or scores to specific tasks based on their difficulty and importance. Upon reaching some milestone of points, you can spend them on some treat. A treat, again, could be anything. See paragraph 1, reward-based approach. If you're working with a team or have colleagues that face similar tasks, create a friendly competition to make a more engaging atmosphere. Seeing who can complete their tasks first can really boost your productivity. But don't go too far, because some people turn out to be overly competitive. You can even go further and come up with virtual badges, achievements, or even game characters that you can unlock. These will serve as a visual representation of your progress and will add an element of fun. Honestly, there could be so much more little things to it. For instance, time limits and bonuses for earlier task fulfillment. Or levels, based on which you receive more points upon completing a specific task. If you are into social games like this, give it a go. I'd recommend a Habitica app for doing this, but you could certainly come up with something on your own with a little creativity. Okay, we're moving forward to one of my favorite topics, 
which is the environment we're working in. Let me tell you a story. In my last year of high school, I had to prepare for my graduation exams. I passed them well, good for me. However, when college arrived, that's where I found myself in a bit of a bind because the approaches that had used to work for me before actually weren't as effective anymore. There were various factors at play, such as perhaps not the best command of the German language I had, the different curriculum, and the partial shock from immigrating to a new place. With so much happening at once, I understood that I had to come up with a solution to tackle my academic responsibilities. That's when I realized how important the auditory and visual surroundings can be. I noticed that the environment in which I studied had a huge impact on my focus and productivity. When I was in high school, I had a familiar space around me that helped me concentrate better. But then in college, everything was new and different, and it clearly affected my ability to immerse myself fully in studies. So here's what I did, and I guarantee it will work for you too. I created a designated area with minimal distractions, ensuring it was well lit and organized. A tidy and visually appealing workspace will do wonders for your motivation. Plus, I tried experimenting with background music. I noticed that certain tracks or calming sounds would block out external distractions and help me focus better. Lo-fi, what would I do without you? In addition, you could find quieter areas in cafes or libraries. For example, when I have to do exam prep, I like to take a couple of friends with me to Starbucks and mix business with pleasure. And of course, as we're all living in the age of online content, the digital environment is essential too. Structuring the folders on your computer is a very beneficial thing to do for a quicker workflow. On the other hand, you also might want to minimize the incoming notifications to reduce the clutter. It's such a broad topic, let me know in the comment section down below if you would like to see how I organize my digital environment. With a little bit of time, practice and experimentation, you can create the surroundings that make a huge impact on your productivity. Some work can be tiresome, but if you put yourself in a comfortable situation, you're halfway to convincing your brain that you're somewhere on a luxurious vacation. Too bad that the mind is too smart to fall for it. And we've come to the final destination at this road. For a better understanding of the last concept, I would like to play a little game with you. Imagine, you're standing tall, ready to conquer the last feet of the mountain. Behind you are miles of the toughest descent of your life. The trip, that took a whole month, is now to come to its logical end. You summon your strength and take those steps, after which comes instant gratification of the view from the top of the world. Now let's get back to reality and discuss. Did you, in this example, feel the power of visualization? It's highly likely that you've never climbed a mountain ever in your life, but in this little exercise, you surely saw how imagining the positive outcome can make you go forward. And the same principle holds true for other activities. If you imagine what you will receive from finishing some boring task, you awaken a driving force within yourself. In the end, you might even end up liking this activity. Mike Tyson woke up at 4 a.m. to jog to become the best boxer. Kobe Bryant had four training sessions a day during the off-seasons. I'm discussing four ways to trick your brain. Just kidding. Do you think these guys saw it as a burden? Or maybe more like a necessity to their careers? When asked in an interview about his work ethic, Kobe said that it wasn't really a job for him. Everything, even the stuff that seemed the most intimidating, was a part of his big love for basketball. Of course, sometimes we have to force ourselves, because as humans, we're not perfect. But overall, even the most banal work is part of something bigger, so give it a thought. This trick is the best for turning so-called chores into beloved activities. Imagine the positive outcome that they will bring in the future. So, dear viewer, remember that the path to conquering the humdrum and turning it into magic lies within your grasp. Today we've learned about four techniques to navigate through the everyday chores the reward-based approach, gamification, the optimization of your surroundings, and the art of positive visualization. Remember, the road to success does not need to be difficult. It can be an adventure filled with growth and gratification. Follow for more content like this, and I will see you in the next one.